Okay, where's eight? Four foot two it was. There it is. Yeah, two. Just right there. So your garbage was 19 inches in there. Look how much twist you got. And I know that Just that little bit. It, it, it's almost the same girth on frame lines or almost anywhere because it's parallel at the end, so close you can't, nothing. Like he was a voice, you know. My old man could put his arms around a 50-gallon drum and squash it. Really? Well, I'm back here at Bristol Shipwrights, and I'm standing here at the planking bench, which we're going to put to good use pretty shortly here. We've got the first layer of strip planking on this 43-foot schooner that we're building right now, the strip planking, and we've shown you quite a bit about it. We're about to start planking over it with Carvel planking, which is gonna be pretty interesting because there's numbers of different things you have to do differently. We can't clamp the planking on and all kinds of different things like that. There's, you know, it has to be a program that's designed for this boat in particular to get it planked. Never mind, you know, the mechanical aspects of it about you know, clamping them on and fastening them on and different things like that. But where do the planks go? You know, how do you put them on there? Where is it going to be? What kind of a plan have we got? And believe me, I believe that you have to have a very solid plan when you go about these things because you can wind up in all kinds of trouble. I've seen recently numbers of different planking projects where people kind of really either didn't seek out the proper advice or didn't go about it the right way. And as it goes on, they start having all kinds of different problems and di different things like that. We can't let that happen. You know, we have to make it look good all the way through. It has to be kind of easy. And, uh, you know, we've developed a system to do it. And uh, the first thing that it requires is that we get the hull lined off or planned out the way we want to plank it. And we want to start our planning from the shear because you know, the shear is a given. You know, that line right there, we can't change. So we're going to plank up to that, and then we're going to put on the boat what they call a magic line, which is, you know, a magic line is, is a line that's kind of arrived at by magic, sort of, you know. Uh, it's done with a string. Uh, it's kind of funny because you stretch a string around the boat, and uh, from that string up to the shear line, there'll be a number of planks, and every one of those planks will be identical in shape other than the bevel on the edge of the plank. So that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to Carvel plank the top sides. It's going to be edge set Carvel planking. And, uh, you know, it, it's the easiest and fastest way to do it because we're going to make a pattern that represents that plank, and it's going to cut every plank on the boat off that pattern from that magic line up. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Now, uh, I just want to say that, uh, you know, there's a little different system that's going to go on from the magic line down, and we're going to be discussing that a little bit later. But let's go into this magic line thing here. You know, a magic line is a line that we're going to stretch from the bow of the boat all the way to the stern end of the boat. You know, uh, it's, uh, it kind of looks like what might be a diagonal in the body plan of the of the lines drawn, but it doesn't really fall on that on that. Now these are pretty technical things right here. Maybe not everybody in the world is going to understand exactly what I'm talking about, but at least I'm going to try to make it entertaining. I don't know, you know, it's uh, it's pretty difficult stuff to talk about, really. But you know, a diagonal in the body plan represents a plane that's in the boat. It's a flat plane on a certain angle that runs down through the boat longitudinally. Well, the magic line is a string that's pulled around the boat. It does not represent a plane in the boat whatsoever. You know, it's kind of, what it is, is it's the shortest distance between a point up forward and a point back aft around the girth of the boat. So when you pull the string, it kind of rolls to a position that's the shortest distance between those two points. Kind of similar like if you were pulling a string between, you know, two nails in a, in a perfectly straight line. It's got similarities, but it's not a straight line in any respect, really. It's curved in everything. If you took the dimensions of that magic line from the boat and measured it in the body plan around the girth, and uh, you could install the magic line into the um, half bridge view, into the uh, body plan view, or into the um, 
uh, a longitudinal view uh, from the side of the boat. So, you know, and neither one of those lines would look straight. It'd be a curve in every view. So, you know, it's an interesting line. I want to show you something here. I've got a book right here by Bud McIntosh. Now, it's got some interesting information about lining off in it and stuff. And, uh, you know, actually some of the stuff he's talked about is very right on to me. But there's some other things about diminishing boards and different things that, you know, don't make, you know, a lot of sense to me. I mean, I understand it, but uh, it's not something I would use. I have my own methods. And uh, so I'm going to put the book away and I'm going to show you this little model. Now, this is a model of... Donnell outside the boat that we've got outside and I've got it here on the bench upside down now If I were an architect or I were a buyer of a boat a set of plans And I wanted to build it I would find out pretty rapidly that the line-off plan is not in the plans whatsoever so you're gonna have to develop a line-off plan for the boat and uh it's pretty interesting if you made from the lifts, from the water lines, lifts and made a half model like this, you can use that half model in many, many ways. In the first place, it's nice and pretty. This is a whole model, but it's, it's just, it might as well be a half model here. It's going to demonstrate it like it's a half model. Now, a string like this placed on that half model and stretched around, if you place it on there nice and tight, that's what a magic line is. It's like that. Now, what I would do to generate a magic line on a boat like this, I'd kind of divide it in thirds, uh, or I would use the girth of the boat as the center and measure a certain distance forward and a certain distance aft, and then I would take a measurement from the shear line around to the magic line, say, just an arbitrary number, 60 inches and 60 inches. And then I would take a line and try from the very bow of the boat and the very stern of the boat, I would pull a line until it comes very close to those two dimensions or nails or something driven into the hull or the model. And that I would call the magic line. Now, the other thing about that line is what that line actually is, is a line that represents the position that a straight plank, a perfectly straight plank, and now Ken's going to step in and demonstrate this with me. He's going to take this little batten we've got and stretch it along that line. That line represents the position where you could bend a perfectly straight batten onto the boat that you cannot be edge set of any width, and it will follow that line just like that. Okay, Ken, I think that's it. So there's other things here, you know, you can move the magic line up, you can move the magic line down, you can do all kinds of different things. Some boats and some shapes, this idea doesn't work because it makes the planks, the divisions of the planks, much too narrow at the very ends, and you have to put a magic line on the boat that's not generated necessarily by a string, and you certainly can't do it on the boat uh, that you're building, but you can do it on a half model. You can allow the string to sag down like this. Now, that makes that would make a number of planks not quite so narrow at the ends and not quite so wide in the middle. Now, let me show you what happens if I just taut up the string. You see, that's just allowed to sag. I can't do that, like I said, on the boat itself because it doesn't work well unless the model's upside down. Now, I'm going to pull the string tighter and you can see it roll right up the hull, right? And then all the way up there, that's where a straight plank would lie. This is where on some shapes, you might have to draw your magic line. So the magic line is uh, uh, investigated with a string at least and can be drawn in some cases with a string to come out perfectly. And on the boat that we're building, that's the case. It does come out very, very well and divides the boat up perfectly. We've got the widths that we want at both ends. I'm gonna show you on the boat itself our magic line. I'm gonna show you this little chart right here that we made up a long time ago before we had it planked. We were playing around with lining it off very quickly one afternoon. And we did generate a magic line on the boat, and then we divided uh, from that magic line to the shear on, into 17 planks. And we've since decided that 
we would uh, re-divide that into 19 planks and uh, it's working out really, really well. I, I, I want to show you the string on the hull, the magic line. I'm going to take you up top and I'm going to show you the position in the hull, which is basically amidships where the widest planks are going to be. The amount of edge set that it's going to take in order to get that plank in position. Now, you know, you have to be kind of careful with this stuff because you could line a boat like this off with the same system and then find out that the planks are too wide and you can't get them into position. So, in that case, you would have to spile or somehow take a pattern of those planks in order to work it. It would still line off properly, but it could be too wide. You could have the ends too narrow. There's all kinds of different things like that. In a full-ended boat, Sometimes you line it off like this and the very ends of the plank and seem so narrow that what you do is you put kind of like reverse steelers in it. You use a plank up forward that fades into two planks amidships. So the planks up forward on an inch wide, they'd be like two inches wide or two and a half inches wide or something along those lines. And that's what like uh, double ended boats with full hulls have to be, have to be plank like. Now, you know, I think that, uh, that, uh, We've got all these different things in front of us here. I've tried to explain a little bit about what we're going to do. We're going to use a little different system from the magic line down, and there's a, a futtock line or a, or a tuck line back aft that we're going to do a little discussion of later on. But uh, right now, we're going to show you that edge set up top, and we're going to show you this magic line, how we generated it on the boat. Well, I've tried my best to show you some of the things on the bench here about lining off, uh, you know, the magic line and different things like that. And now I'm going to show you exactly how we arrived at the magic line on the boat right here. Now, I had said that on equal uh, distances from the girth of the boat on both sides, which happens to be right here at station number six and down here at station number 10, I've got a tape here, a metric tape hanging from the shear line at this station. It's got uh, millimeters on one side and it's got feet and inches on the other side. So, you know, we don't want to try to divide it in feet and inches because that's a little difficult. It divides so much easier in the metric system on this side. We've got 1,995 millimeters and I hope it makes everybody happy around the world you know the Europeans and just about everywhere and I hope Mr. Chafee's happy out there in North Dakota because we are going to use the metric system to get these divisions so you know uh, basically this is where we uh, duplicated a measurement on six and number ten to get the magic line but we're going to use the same tape measure at every station and probably halfway between the stations to divide it all the way along and we're going to have 19 or 20 divisions so we're going to have either 19 or 20 planks we haven't decided yet from the magic line up it kind of depends on how wide we want the planks to be in the areas that they've got the most edge set so you know we're looking at it and uh, we've got to figure it out very close to exactly what we're going to do and we're letting you in on it now we're going to take you up on the other side of the boat and show you approximately amidships where it's got the most edge set and we're also going to take you back aft and show you a little bit of back aft about the magic line and what you call the tuck line. Now I'm back aft and there's a few things I want to show you back here. The first thing is about this magic line again. Now like I said that magic line is a position on the boat where you could put a straight plank perfectly straight that you couldn't even edge set. And no matter where you place it alongside that magic line, it's going to follow the magic line absolutely perfectly. So that magic line, like I had said many times, is in a position that a plank would need no edge set to match up to it whatsoever, just like that. And on this particular shape, it's pretty nice because the magic line that we've drawn on it and that we're going to use is quite parallel to what I would call a tuck line. A tuck line would be like a line that kind of runs into the most curved part of the stern post. And in a lot of boats it's a lot tighter turn than this, but in this one right here, you know, you could put a tuck line in here, up in here, or down in here. But 
The thing with it is, when you place this on here in a position that has no twist in it whatsoever, it just lays nice and flat, it's basically paralleling the magic line, which is absolutely perfect. So it's, we're gonna put from the magic line down parallel planks, and uh, as a possibility, we might put one little uh, 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 steeler back aft, but probably not. We're gonna have parallel planks from here right down, all the way down to the goblet plank. So pretty simple system. It's working out really nicely, and I wanna take it up top on the other side and show you this edge set plank that we're looking at. Well, we're sitting up top here on the port side, really at the shear, and uh, this line right here pretty much represents the shear line. It's not exactly on it. Uh, we've got one more plank to put on, but what I want to show you here is the amount of edge set uh, in the boat in this area. Now, just from a preliminary look at the plans and what we've been doing, we figure that this is probably the most edge set of the plank in, in the boat right here in this area right here. So we've got a plank on here right now that's perfectly straight and uh, over the length of this plank, which is like, what, 16 feet or something like that, you know, you've got two and a half inches or maybe three inches really of edge set to put into it. So, you know, you're gonna have to edge set it right down. And uh, we wanna make sure about this because we don't want to uh, divide from the magic line to the shear line on the other side or on this side and uh, plan out the planking to be too wide and then be able to go up here and put them on and not be able to get them to edge set into position. So we're gonna do a little bit of an experimentation about all this edge setting before we do it. This is just kind of a little preliminary way we're gonna go about it. We're gonna cut a plank that's the right width and the right taper and everything and go around the boat with that, trying to edge set it onto the lines just to make sure we're not in trouble anywhere. And that's just something that you do when you're trying to be careful. We don't wanna go backwards and we, want, we don't wanna have any trouble as we go along. So we've got this plank clamped up here right now and uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is take the center clamp right off of it and we're gonna take some of these miracle clamps right here, which we really love and I'm gonna stick one of them right up there like this, and uh, they're kind of bar clamps, but they push as well as pull. So I'm gonna start edge setting it down now. We're not gonna go too far. We're gonna go about like that now. Look what's happening. You know, the bottom of the plank is laying against the frames nice and tight, but you're developing this incredible space at the top. So that's what happens when you try to edge set planks and you don't have them clamped on really tight. You start to get this roll. So we have to compensate for that. So we need to keep the plank clamped against the frame tightly. Now, it doesn't have to be, we're gonna slide it down the frame so these clamps don't have to be incredibly tight. They just have to bring up that space like that. Okay, so now we've got it reduced down to about an inch and a half and now we can just keep cranking it right down. So, you know, let me see if one of them will bring it down, Ken. Let me just try this one here. That one's gonna go loose. Yeah, look at that. With one hand, with that clamp, you can pull that right down into position just as nice as pie, just like that. So it's obvious that uh, a plank a little bit wider and a little bit thicker would edge set maybe a touch more difficult, but uh, you know, uh, <laughs> the line off lines on this boat and the fairness of it and the way it's been designed, it accepts edge set planking absolutely perfectly, and we're gonna make a picnic out of it.